Uh, welcome back guys. This is part four, I think. So in this part we'll be adding um more rhythm lanes. So I already did that. And uh this is the result that you should get at the end of this video. First things first, I'm say Okay, cool. You see we have five lanes and uh in our last video we stopped at two lanes and I promised that we'd be adding um we'd be adding more lanes, okay? So Let's get started. Um, the first thing that I did is I created an actor that's going to be a template for rhythm lane, right? The goal here with doing that is that I'm going to use child actor components. So this is a, this is a template per se of a rhythm lane. As you know, from following the tutorials, uh, for this plugin right here, media engine rhythm tools that, um, rhythm lanes are composed of the spline which is where the notes that guides the notes, the rhythm judgment box, and then maybe the display of where the rhythm judgment box is. This is where the visual representation of where the user has to press the button. Cool, nice. So going back to our main um, section here, I just used um, no tieways, no tieway uh, child actors. So basically this is a child actor, but then I selected the child actor class right here, which is the one right here. Then I just duplicated this and made five lanes. That's it. That's it for the viewport. Nice. We are done. So, and then we need to come to the interfaces. Okay. For the interfaces, I'll start with select rhythm spline, right? So this is how it looks. And I want to explain a few things. All right. So I've agreed with myself or my team, if you have a team, right? That note G5 goes to lane one or highway one note f5 goes to lane two and so on and so forth all right so you can just follow this i'm going to scroll through it real quick you can copy it this is the same code for note highway one note highway two it's just that you've agreed that g5 lane one so um, the reason why we did that is that in your door you can probably do this okay so as you can see these notes g5 f5 e5 d5 c5 they match these all right so if I place a note here in my FL Studio, I know that this note is going to appear on um, lane one, right? As I'm designing my um, my my MIDI file that I'm going to put into Unreal Engine. So I'll cover this more later, but basically this is what I did, okay? As you can see, I have a track for drums, easy, drums expert. So you know that in Fortnite Festival, you choose like the drums and then you choose the difficulty. If it's easy, we'll use this track, all right? We use the drums easy track, which is this one. If the user selects the expert, we use this one, medium, blah, 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 blah. So this is how I did it, right? I'll cover this later on another video, right? So I'm just, I just wanted to give you the reason of why I did this instead of what you're used to. Okay. So the other function that you want to look at is your spawn rhythm actor. Um, the spawn rhythm actor looks like this. All right. Same thing. We are trying to filter things based on uh, G5, F5, and E5. So lane one, lane two, lane three. For example, if it's lane one, G5 um we check that uh the note how we want and the rhythm spline just to verify it's lane one and then we set the input action so the input action for lane high one is the button that the user needs to press to score for lane highway one okay or for note highway one okay so for the input action this is what we're doing so we're basically so this spawn rhythm actor we are just basically spawning the rhythm actor and then we are setting the input action that the user needs to press this is the goal of this entire function and then here we're just repeating the same thing right so going back to our input actions, uh, I just wanted to show you that I created new input actions for this game. Um, these are the input actions. So I said input action, no tally one, right action. So nothing here. And then I assigned the actual keys in the IMC input mapping context. So no tally one is assigned to D. So you can change this at runtime if you wanted to. For example, if your player wants to, um, you know, change their bindings. So basically this is what I did. Um, the next function that you, we need to take a look at, right, is if you come to um, no highway, I mean the festival no highway, like the FN, the actual template, and the viewport, sorry, in the event graph, the last function we need to take or take a look at is this one. We are processing, the, we are processing the user input action, right? So when the pre, when the user presses the no highway one action, which is well D in this case. Right, we want to check if 
the input action that he submitted and we want to check if there's any um any notes in the note type we want judgment box basically this is what we're doing so for the process input function i didn't change it this is the same one in the example file but i just wanted to show you these three parts that make this entire thing work okay so take a look um yeah that's basically it for certain of the multiple inputs you're gonna have to rewrite some of the, the the functions that are here that's what i did i just rewrote them so that they match um fortnite festival as you know in fortnite festival um, a single lane is assigned to a single key right unlike the example file where we have one lane but you can scroll with up down left right but in fortnite festival it's like the d key is assigned to note how we won there's no other key that's assigned to note how we won so this is what we are doing here right so yeah in the next video i'll probably cover setting up the camera setting up the these um umg widgets so that uh, they align like df jkl as you, you've seen um fortnite festival uh maybe setting up the widgets but i don't want to cover widgets that much because i think that's the easy part it's just umg but i'll just run through them real quick and then maybe i'll run you through um creating the midi files for your game so thanks